thank you that we can sing songs of praise and worship to you, Lord. And I do pray, Lord, this evening that you would uh, Lord, just give us a spirit and a heart of worship, Lord. That as we lift our voices up in song, Lord, that it would just be a, a sweet melody to your ears, Lord. And Lord, that it would be a song and a, and a sound, Lord, that just glorifies you. I do pray, Lord, that you would speak to us in a powerful way this evening through the preaching of the word. And Lord, that we know that we would leave here changed people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated.
situation this is just a message that came out of that and that is to be strong in the Lord and the main thing that God showed me is Anthony you need to be strong as a strong leader as a husband as a strong youth pastor as a but also and most importantly for all of us is a strong Christian a lot of people in this world today see a lot of weak Christians and it draws them away from being a Christian and then some people see someone who's a strong Christian who's a little bit too, you know, not that you can be too strong, but they're, they're strong on certain areas, and we're going to talk about that a lot tonight, but this world desperately needs strong Christians, and I'm not going to get into the problems of the world and different things that we're dealing with. We know that. We understand that this is a very difficult, crazy time that we live in, and what is the answer? Well, there really is not an answer for some of it, but the hope and the looking forward to the light at the end of a tunnel, you could say, is Christ. And how do people see Christ? The way that you heard about Jesus, the way that I heard about Jesus, somebody told you. Maybe now in the day and age that we live in, you can read it online or you can 
somebody was a witness. And where does that come from? That comes from a strong Christian. Amen. Think about everybody in here. You have somebody in your life that needs a strong Christian in their life. It may just be as somebody who is saved, somebody who needs to be uplifted, or maybe it's a family member who is not saved that needs to see a strong Christian in these times. Christians need to step up and stand up like never before. Amen. And I, under, I, I believe that wholeheartedly that it is time that God has placed us here for a reason. And you are alive right now in 2022 for a specific reason. And God has a purpose for you. And, and that purpose is to be a strong Christian. And you'll miss his big plan. You'll miss what he has for you if you're a weak Christian. We need to be strong in our relationship with God, our dependence on God, and our faith in God. So those are our three points that we're going to talk about tonight. Number one is a strong relationship in the Lord. I didn't even read the text yet. Look, I'm just going for it. I'm all wound up. Had my coffee. I was like, man, i got to stop and get a coffee. So let's read the, uh, the text first. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. But on the put on the whole armor of God Amen. that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Isn't it amazing Amen. that we are able to stand Amen. against the devil? Right. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers and against rulers of the darkness of this world, against Amen. spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. This I just thought of this now, but you know, having done all, we have to do all that we can to stand. A, a weak Christian is somebody who is do part of what you need to do. Not all of it, but Paul says, do all that you can to stand up for God. And keep reading in verse 14. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereon too with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, and for me that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly Amen. to make known the mystery of of the gospel. So I see first in, in verse number 10, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. So first you need to be in the Lord. Well, what does that mean? You have to have a relationship with God, a strong relationship. Well, first you have to be saved. So let me hear salvation. You know, you can't be in the Lord. Or there's a lot of uh, terminology in the Bible that says in Christ, you that are in Christ. Well, that just means somebody who's saved, who's in the family of God. So to be strong in the Lord, you have to be saved. You're not going to get your strength and your relationship with God if there's sin separating for you from God. And you know, a Sunday night crowd. I'm sure we under a Sunday night crowd. I'm sure we understand that. But the reality is, rejoice that you're saved. But maybe you're listening on live stream. Maybe you know somebody shared it, or you've heard about it, or or you're here tonight. You're not sure you're saved. You just trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. Realize that you're a sinner, and God will save you. So you have to be saved to be in the Lord. But now that you, you are saved, you say, you know what, I've been saved a couple of years, I've been saved many years, I, I, I want to have a strong relationship with God. And that ought to be your you know, desire. And I, I dare to say, if it's not your desire, then you need to check you know, if you really are saved, because we should desire to get closer and closer to God. So, a strong relationship. So you say to yourself, how do I have a strong relationship? And I was thinking on the car ride here, it's not a very long one, but I was thinking... <laughs> If you don't know, I live like a minute away. It's a blessing and a curse sometimes. But it's like, oh, I don't, I don't have to leave now. I'm just, I'm only a minute away. And then you forget this and that, and then you're like, but a rabbit trail. I do that. It's okay. But a strong relationship. God, why did I say that? I don't remember. Having a strong relationship with God. So how do you have a strong relationship? I remember. I was thinking to myself, how do I have a strong relationship? And I thought, you know, I don't think I have the strongest relationship. And God says, I didn't say you have to be perfect. This is the message that I've given you. And we all need to strive to have a strong relationship. None of us are saying, man, I'm the best. <laughs> Hopefully not. I have the strongest relationship. I can't, can't get any stronger. No, we all need to strive Amen. to be stronger Christians. So letter A here was salvation. But letter B is communication. <laughs> Your, every relationship is based off of trust. And communication and that's how it is with God you need to be communicating with God if you don't communicate with God you're not gonna have a strong relationship I think about my wife if I didn't talk to my wife all day she probably wouldn't be very happy well it's the same with God we need to be talking to him 
each and every day. How do we do that? Ephesians 6, 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. You know, what does it take for you to stop praying? Or what does it take for you to start praying? I know, I just, like I mentioned before, in hours and hours and hours in the hospital parking lot, that will cause you to pray, whether you're a weak or a strong Christian. But a strong Christian is somebody who constantly prays every day, no matter if it's a good or a bad day. Someone who has a prayer, you know, we call it a prayer life. Someone who just gets up every day and says, hey, I'm going to pray today, whether I feel like it or not. Let's all be honest. We've all woken up a sleepless night or, you know, whatever it may be. It's like, man, I, I just want to, you know, hit the snooze button. But we have to be someone who's a strong Christian who's going to have a prayer life with God. And in 1 Timothy chapter 2, it talks about, first of all, prayer and supplication to be made for all men. What does that mean? First of all, it's the most important thing you can do as a Christian is to pray. If you, have, if you want to have a strong relationship, if you feel like you have a relationship with God, but you want it to be stronger, there has to be prayer. And I'm speaking to myself, and obviously I'm speaking to all of you and those on the, the live stream. It's, I understand that prayer is something that takes work. Prayer is something that may seem difficult, but prayer is something that is worth it. Why? Because it gets God involved. It gets God involved with your life, with your problems. It's a time to praise God. It's a time to confess sin. So make sure that we have a prayer life. Communication is the key to any relationship. And I'm not going <laughs> to Certainly not up here giving marriage advice. I've been married two years, and I love it. And you know, many people say, "Oh, just wait for twenty years, whatever." But it's true. Communication, even just being married a few years, communication is key. Well, it's the same with any relationship, and it's the same with God. You have to communicate with God. So make sure we communicate. How do we do that? We pray. Well, how do we hear God talk to us? Yes, I understand God can speak to you in your heart, but the main way that God will speak to you is through your Bible. And you never lose right. fact that this is God's holy word that He wrote just for each and every one of you. It's a love letter that God said, hey, I love you so much, I'm going to give you all this to guide you through your life. You know, a lot of times I hear young people, I, maybe I've said it myself, you know, the Bible is so big, I, I mean, I struggle to read it each and every year. Some people I've tried before to read twice a year, read six, seven chapters a day, and I got to myself, why am I complaining that God gave me so much instruction? I mean, really, God didn't have to give us this. He could have gave us one book, but he loved us so much that he gave us the whole Bible. So realize that, that the, the fact that the Bible is big, the fact that the Bible has so much wonderful different things for you, is God showing, hey, I have everything covered, anything you need, God will speak to you in the Bible. So pray and talk to God, but allow God to speak to you in your Bible reading. Prayer and Bible reading is the foundation for your relationship with God. That is the starting point. If you say, hey, I'm here tonight, I need to, or I'm on live stream, I'm watching, and, and I'm listening, and I want a stronger relationship with with God. It has to start with prayer and Bible reading. Your devotional time. Not just you know getting up in the morning, but throughout the day, just re having no cards or thinking about your Bible verses or praying to God. So realize that, that prayer and Bible reading is the foundation for your relationship. So there's communication and then there's dedication. In verse 13 it says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, Having your loins girt about with truth and having the breastplate of righteousness. So I think about this, you know, you're saved, you, you've decided to follow God and, and, and accept salvation. It's like, yeah, I'm a home in heaven. And then somebody tells you, well, you know, the devil and his demons and your flesh in this world are coming after you. You say, oh, well, I didn't, I didn't sign up for that. You know, the, the, people, the Bible talks about the seed that gets choked up by the world and different seeds that don't show fruit. Well, a strong Christian will say, hey, I'm going to fight, I'm going to stand, I'm going to be dedicated to God. You know, what does it take for you to lose your commitment to the Lord? But whether it's somebody at work that you know, attacks your Christianity or a family member, hey, I don't want to hear about that. It's like, oh, you know what, maybe I'll just not talk about it anymore. No, we have to be dedicated to the Lord. Amen. A strong Christian is a sold-out Christian. You know, God never, never once says, you know, it's okay to be you know, a kind of relaxed Christian, come to church when you can, do whatever you want to do. You know, just if you think about me, pray, that's fine. No, God only intends for Christians to be sold out, to be strong Christians, ones who are completely dedicated to him. And if you're not dedicated to God, if you feel like right now in your life, I need to, we call it, you know, a lot of young people, they dedicate to themselves to the Lord. That's not just for teenagers, that's for everybody. But you feel like, I want to dedicate my life to the Lord. Tonight. That's a great thing to do. Why? Because we have to stay committed to God. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 16. Maybe you've heard this story before, talking about Jesus really talking about 
commitment and dedicating your life to the Lord. And, you know, Jesus never sugarcoated his preaching. He didn't make it sound good. He told them how it was. And in uh, Matthew 16 and verse 24, then Jesus said unto his disciples, oh, actually, let's back up. In verse 22, it says, then Peter took him and began to rebuke him. <laughs> There, good old Peter rebuking the Lord. Be it far from thee, Lord. This shall not be unto thee. And, and, but he turned and he said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God and those things that be of men. And here it is. It says, Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, if you're going to follow Christ, if you're going to be a Christian, a strong Christian, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profit if he, if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? So Jesus is saying it's all or nothing. I'm not, I don't want you to be half in. I don't want you to be kind of involved with Christianity. I want you to be all in for the Lord. And he's saying you know, to his disciples, I want you to be dedicated to to following after me. He said, you're going to deny yourself. What does that mean? <laughs> Whatever you want, if it doesn't line up with what God wants, it needs to go away. God, it's, people say, it's my way or the highway. Well, it really is God's way or the highway. You do it God's way, but God is a loving God. He's not a, a mean you know, boss who's over you and trying to do it his way or whatever it may be. No, he's a loving God who wants to show you the right path and the right direction. Why? Because he knows the right path and he knows the right direction because he's God and he's all knowing and we need to follow after him. So be dedicated to Christ. It's worth it. Strong Christians are committed Christians. One who are dedicated to Christ and his cause. We need to be dedicated to God every day. Dedication, commitment. It means every single day doing what you need to do. Every single day reading and praying and talking to God and being that strong Christian. Because the day you wake up and don't read or don't pray or don't have this dedicated life to the Lord is the day the devil's going to attack you and you're not going to be ready for it. You have to be a strong Christian each day. And every day, I think of this illustration of people who like to work out and like to go to the gym. You know, they always say January is the busiest month, and it's true. <laughs> it's a funny story. I was driving by a gym. I didn't go in the gym. I actually went to the pizza place next to the gym, <laughs> and, and, and I got some pizza. It was delicious. I ate half of it. It was wonderful. So this is not a story of how wonderful I am at the gym. But you know, I drove by. It was crazy. People everywhere. Why? Because everyone's like, I'm making this New Year's resolution. I'm going to the gym more, and then after a while, you know, it dies down, and the the people who are dedicated are still there. The people who are committed are still there. And they're probably like, oh, good, this guy who won't last a while is finally off my machine. I can get back to my routine. And yes, because I know a few people who go to the gym each and every day, and they love it, and that's good for them. It's not good for me, but it should be. But, but the reality is that what? They're dedicated. Christianity is not just for, oh, it's January, make, let me make a new commitment, or, oh, that was a great revival message. Let me dedicate my life to the Lord. And then a couple months later, you know, you're falling off the tracks again. We need to be committed to God. And how do we do that? Well, I think the best way that it's helped me is to realize that it's not just a one-time thing or a once-in-a-while thing. It's an everyday thing. Hey, I'm going to be committed to Christ no matter what comes my way. So be uh, be com uh, have communication, have dedication, and then lastly here, uh, for a strong relationship with Christ is education. Now, I'll explain. I just wanted it to rhyme. But education, wanting to know more about God. In Philippians chapter 3, in verse 10, Philippians chapter 3, in verse 10, I'll read it for you. It says, Paul is speaking that I may know him, talking about, the, uh, talking about Jesus and God, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. You know, Paul had a desire to know God. Amen. How is your desire to know God? A strong Christian, somebody who is founded in prayer and founded in Bible reading and loves God is someone who's going to want to know more about God. Do you know more about God than you did five years ago? I mean, think about that. This is really a, a, a test that, that I even gave myself and un, unfortunately failed. You know, am I a strong enough Christian or am I the strong Christian that I need to be? So realize that you, need to, you, just, you should desire to know more about God. So there's salvation, communication, Dedication and education. Those are just that I could go on and on, just talking about a strong relationship with Christ, but there needs to be those few things. And then, secondly, so talking about being strong in the Lord, being a strong Christian, is you have to have a strong relationship, but you also have to have strong dependence. Number two here is strong dependence. And I love this verse in Ephesians chapter 6. And if I had a text verse, it would be this one in 6, verse 10. 
Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. So there's the relationship in the power of his might. Never once does the Bible say, you know what, figure it out. Do it in your own strength. You know, go ahead, try it. Maybe if it doesn't work, then talk to God. No, it says in the, in the power of his strength. Whose strength is that? Well, that's God's strength. God is there to help you. In junior church, we talked today about, you know, somebody who's so strong, right? We kids, you know, oh, my dad, or, you know, I would say, do any of you think you could beat me in an arm wrestle? And, of course, there's some that think they could. You know, why? Because I have more power than them. I'm not proud of it. I'm not up here to brag about it. But think about somebody, think about Goliath, or I said Shaquille O'Neal, or some of these, you know, people who are massive individuals. Well, I would never be able to beat them up. Why? Because I don't have enough power. Well, think if someone ever went against God. It, you know, I love that verse in uh, Psalm chapter 2 that everybody, all the nations of the earth went against God. He laughed at him. Why? Because he's all powerful. Right. Nothing right. can stand against our God. And realize that when you need strength, you should go to the source. You should go to somebody who has all strength. Why? Because that's where, you know, that's where you're actually going to get help. And that's where you go to God. Amen. Go to God for your strength. I love the verse in Isaiah chapter 26. I think it's uh, verse 4. It says, in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting Strength. You know, God doesn't get tired. God doesn't sleep in. And God, you know, you know, we know when Jesus was on this earth, praise the Lord, he took a nap, and that's biblical. But you know, God isn't somebody who says, Oh, I'm out of strength today. No, God has everlasting strength to help you with each and every problem, each and every situation, each and every difficulty. God has the strength for it. So we need to depend on his might. Don't depend on yourself. Because when you start depending on yourself is when you're going to get messed up. Yes, we can do things, and yes, we can, you know, you know maybe you know, physically strong or emotionally strong or whatever it may be. But God is going to help us be spiritually strong. So strong dependence, uh, letter A here is the source of strength. And I've talked about it. God is the source of our strength. Turn with me to John chapter 15. John chapter 15, the source of our strength. In John chapter 15 and verse... 5, John chapter 15 and verse 5, it says, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him the same, bringeth forth much fruit. And here it is, for without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Now this is talking about bringing forth fruit, and being fruitful as a Christian, and God said, without me you can't do anything. And I've realized that there's days in my life where I try to do it in my own strength and I can't get anything done. Everything's a wreck. Everything's a mess. But when I stop and pray and talk to God, God's like, oh, it's funny. I already had it all figured out for you. If you would have just went to me first, you would have saved yourself a lot of trouble. So realize that God is the source of our strength. And when you need strength, go to God for strength. When you need help, when you need peace, when you need all the wonderful things that the Bible promises you, go to God. For those things. Don't look for them in the world. Obviously, hopefully not. Don't look for them in yourself. Just go to God and God has the strength. God says, abide in me and I in you. And without me, you can do nothing. That's the Bible. Just abide in Christ and you'll be the strong Christian that you need to be. So he's a, a, a source of strength. You know, he's the sufficiency of power. He talks about his strength. Now God is, and we've talked about it a little bit, God is all powerful. He has all the strength that he'll ever need to accomplish all of your needs. God is never going to run out of strength. And God, you know, He created everything. He's the creator of all things. So God is all powerful and He has all sufficient power. And then lastly, here, so He's the source of our strength. He's the sufficiency of power. And then C, letter C here, number two, is the symbol of hope. The symbol of hope. So talking about strong dependence on God. You know, there are people that depend on you, or, you know, there's maybe you have, you know, family members or, you know, whatever it may be, or, uh, you know, fellow employees or whether you're in a management position, there may be people that depend on you. Well, realize that when you need something, whether it's a, if it's a spiritual need, you need to depend on God. So dependent is really just, you know, putting your trust and desires and your, and really all that you are, when you feel weak or feel low, you need to go to God for that strength. He's, and then God is a symbol of hope. So turn with me to Psalm chapter 46. Psalm chapter 46, talking about how uh, Christ is the symbol of our hope. In Psalm chapter 46, it says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not, uh, will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters there roar and be troubled. 
Though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, say long. And then if you go to the end of the chapter in, in verse 9, and he maketh the wars to cease unto the end of the earth, he breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear asunder and burneth the chariot in the fire. And then verse 10, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. So a refuge is just a place of shelter, a place of security, a place of peace and, and comfort. And the Bible says God is our refuge. I think of, you know, when I was a kid and we'd play outside and we'd be at the park in, in summer and it'd just start pouring or thunderstorming. And what do we do? Well, or if you're out in the pool and it starts lightning, I was always deathly afraid of thunderstorms. And my brothers will tell you how, you know, fearless I was. I would hide under the blanket and cry. Especially the one night we had a, a tornado warning. That was like the ho most horrible thing for me as a child. When you see that red line on the weather channel, it's like, so maybe you're a thunderstorm warning. I would just get so scared and I would just hide. It was terrible. But why? Because if it started pouring and rain, what would I do? I'd run home and I'd run and run inside and I'd get, you know, get a blanket on me and I'd get all, you know, scared and cozy up. Why? Because I felt like it was a place of refuge. Now in adult life, you're going <laughs> to have a lot of different storms of life that are a lot worse than just a thunderstorm. And where do you go? You have to go to God for your refuge. Don't go to other people or to yourself or some you know, video or YouTube that makes you feel good or a friend that will you know, help you out. You know, that's wonderful and that's great or whatever it is, but you have to go to God first as a refuge. God wants to help you. God wants to give you peace and security. God is the refuge from the storms of life. Depend solely on God. Because the second we start getting away from God and you know, the world has some things that are temporary, pleasurable, and it may make you feel good, or you know, it's like, you know, I don't feel too bad now, I forgot about it. If you know anything about me, I love food, I love coffee. It's like, man, I just need to sit down with some chips and just relax. You know, that may make me feel good for a little bit, but that's not going to take away any problems. When I depend on God and go to God as a refuge is when things, you know, God gives me peace. God gives you the, the tranquility that you need. So as he's a symbol of hope. He's our refuge. He's a giver of shelter and peace and security. In turn with, uh, I'll read this verse in Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. I would quote it, but I always mess it up. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 and 7. It says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So God is the giver of that peace. And then lastly here, point number three is strong faith. So you have a strong relationship with the Lord. And that's the main, I think that's the most important starting point is to work on your relationship with God. And then you need to be, depend on God, have a strong dependence on God. And then lastly, so we need to have a strong faith in God. And then going back to our, our passage, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 16, it says, and above all, most importantly, Paul saying, take the shield of faith. Wherewith you may be able to quench all, not some of them, but all the fiery darts of the wicked. So we need faith. Christians need to have unwavering faith in the days that we live in. There's a lot of people everywhere that are going to attack your faith, attack what you believe. and yeah. They're going to go against you, and you need to know what you believe. So just very quickly, what is faith? When people say faith, there's two different things that they're usually talking about. There's the faith, which is the Christian you know, faith, what we believe. We think of our, our doctrines that we believe, and those you need to know, you know in and out. And if you, if you don't, the, the church constitution really lays them out well for you, gives you Bible verses. I remember when I became a member when I was 16, I read the whole thing. I looked at every single verse. It took me hours. I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. It's in the Bible. It's right there. And I believed it. And God showed me. And God encouraged me and proved it. And that's where I really started understanding you need to know it for yourself. Because if somebody says, oh, why do you believe that? And you can't say why you personally believe it. Well, they're going to attack you. They're going to try to you know, undercut your faith. And then there's your faith. What you believe. It's not just the faith. Well, I believe in God. I'm a Christian. You know. But then there's your faith. What do you believe? What would you stand up for? What would you say, hey, don't... That, that's not right. I mean, let me show you from the Bible where you're, what that actually is. And, you, know, you need to stand up for your faith. What do you personally believe about God and what you trust him for? So faith is also believing God, understanding that God is all powerful and God can do anything for you. So believing God, that's your faith, putting your faith and trust in God. So letter A here is our faith is under attack. Make sure you know what you believe and why you believe it. This world needs strong Christians that will stand up for what they believe. 
No, it's getting, unfortunately, it's getting less and less of people who are just like, oh, well, this isn't that important, or this isn't that important. Well, if it's in the Bible and God told you it, it's very important. You Amen. need to stand up for it. You say, hey, no, this is right, and you're wrong. And obviously, the Bible says do it in love, and we understand that. But there's a time when you need to stand up and say, hey, the Bible is right, right. and you're wrong. Amen. So understand that if faith is under attack, and if, and if the Bible clearly says, you know, this is wrong, or, you know, different things, you know, uh, that people go against or in the world today, you know, it's wrong, and the Bible says, it's wrong. And I believe the Bible because Jesus saved me. And that's the only reason I know is because it's found in God's word that God gave me. So understand that your faith is under attack and it's worth fighting for. The Bible is worth fighting for. Realize that God gave you this book and he gave it to you personally and God speaks to you and he helps you and realize all of that. When somebody attacks you, say, hey, no, 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 that's the Bible, that's God's word, Amen. and that is right. So understand that it's under attack, but we can stand up for it. And I love these verses in verse 13. Wherefore, Take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand, to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. We talked about that. Do all that you can to stand up for God. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having the breastplate of righteousness. If you look at the end verse, at verse 17, uh, the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Now, they would have understood that because in those days and age, the Romans and the, the, the soldiers of that day would have had swords and things like that. And it did, that's why it doesn't say, you know, the Glock or something like that because they had swords back then. He says, you know, the most powerful weapon, the, the stabbing weapon that the Romans use against you, well, that your weapon is the Word of God because the Word of God is more powerful than anything anybody can do. It changes lives. No other book, no other, uh, you know, anything that somebody could tell you is going to change you more than the Bible. So stand up for it and stand up for our faith. So have a strong faith. Don't let it waver. And, and uh, James 1.6 says, nothing wavering, you know, nothing doubting. Don't doubt God or what he's done for you. And then letter B is the peace of God cast out fear and anxiety. You know, I've never seen so much fear and anxiety in the day that we live in. And I'm, again, I'm young and I, I haven't seen much, but I understand that a lot of people are fearful. A lot of people are worried. And I understand that. I, was, I mean, like I mentioned before, just waiting and waiting and waiting. I was very fearful. I had a lot of anxiety, just not knowing what was going to happen. And a lot of people are dealing with that each and every day. So understand that God is the only one who can bring peace from fear and anxiety. Why? Because when you, when you know that God loves you, when you know that God has the best plan for you, you understand, well, I don't have to fear anything because I'm in God's hand. You know, people talk about... Well, how could you, you know, I, I was in a lot of missions classes in college, and how could you go to the mission field, and how could you do all these dangerous things? Well, they would tell, the safest place is in the will of God. And that's not just for, you know, missionaries, that's for us here and where we live in New Jersey. The safest place is in the will of God. So no one can touch you if you're doing what God wants you to do. So realize that, that God will give you peace, God will settle your fear and anxiety. Turn back to Matthew chapter 14 and verse 22. Now this is the story of the disciples on the, you know, they had the, the storm and Jesus calms the storm. But listen to what Jesus says to them in Matthew chapter 14 and verse 22. And straightway Jesus strained his disciples to get into the ship to go before him onto the other side. And while he sent the multitudes away, he had sent the multitudes away. He went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when he was even come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, and the wind was contrary. And about the fourth watch, they say it's about 3 to 6 a.m. of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out of fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Amen. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And he began to, he began to sink and he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And I love this. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and he caught him. He said unto him, O thou of little faith, where didst thou doubt? So I see here that Jesus really puts together somebody who is not faithful, somebody who is doubting him and not trusting him, is going to be fearful. And now I understand that's hard to take as somebody who struggles with fear, struggles with anxiety that, you know, I, Haley has told me, he says, you know what, your anxiety is a lack of trust in God. It's like, oh, great, now I have more anxiety. But then, you know, some people, it's like, you know, you hear the word anxiety and you get anxiety, and I understand that. But truthfully, the more faith, the stronger you are as a Christian, the more you trust God, the less you'll fear. Because you realize, well, God's got it. 
God's got it under control. And I'll tell you, when I was fearful in that parking lot, and it was just, it was just getting later and later and later, and, you know, nothing calmed my fear. Nothing made, gave me more peace than when I prayed. You know, I could you know, look up stuff on Google. Oh, what does this test mean? What does that mean? You know, that usually doesn't work, end out very well. And, you know, but the reality is nothing gave me more peace than when I prayed to God. So realize that God can give you peace. God can help your fear and your anxiety. And, and you say, well, I don't really have a lot of fear and anxiety, and I trust God enough, and that's great. Help somebody out who may not be trusting God enough. And they're not less of a Christian. They're not you know, any worse of a Christian because they struggle with this. We all have our struggles. Just help them and realize that with faith in God, you can help somebody who's, in, who's fearful. I think of the story with, that we read. Jesus says, you know, where did you doubt? Why are you fearful? He said, just trust me. And you won't fear. I love a, a different chapter in the Bible that says the same story. That just said Jesus would have passed by them if they didn't call out to him. So Jesus is waiting and ready for you to call out to him. But if you don't, he's not going to answer you. I'd be like, oh, why didn't you call me back? He's like, well, you never called me in the first place. You can't get mad at somebody if you never called them. Well, you can't get mad at the Lord for not helping if you don't ask him to. So realize that calling out to God is always the best option. And then lastly here, he brings peace. God is in, uh, God is in control. God understands what you don't. God sees what you can't see. And God has strength when you have none. So rely on God, depend on God, and realize that God is going to get you through it. And then lastly here, let her see. And it, all this kind of comes together at the end here. It's faith to do the impossible. You know, there's a lot of crazy things. There's a lot of people now in our day and age that need something impossible done. And I, I you know... Dare to say that there's a lot of you right now in this room that need something impossible done. I, you know, I have prayer requests on my mind that, humanly speaking, I can't do them. They're not possible, and I don't think they're going to happen. Well, with doubt like that, they're not going to happen. So realize that we need to trust God for the impossible. In Matthew chapter 19, and we're going to read a few verses here talking about G uh, Jesus Himself telling His disciples or telling somebody how they can believe Him for the impossible, that He's the God of the impossible. In Matthew. 19 and verse 26 it says but Jesus beheld them and he said unto them with men this is impossible but with God all things are possible and it's a story talking about uh, you know it's, it's easier for a rich man uh, you know they talk about the, it's easier to go through the, the camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to be saved and the disciples are like oh my goodness who then can be saved and he said well that's impossible with men but with God it is not impossible Amen. let's turn to Luke and uh, Matthew Mark Luke 1 37 talking about uh, I believe it's uh, with Mary and verse 37 and uh, look at verse 36 and behold thy cousin Elizabeth she hath also conceived a son in her old age and this is the sixth month with her and was called barren for with God nothing shall be impossible I know a lot I've heard a lot of stories people say oh we can't have kids you know you know, we can, and then they, you know, God gives him a child. We see that happen here with Elizabeth. Why? Because with God, nothing is impossible. And then lastly, in Mark 9, uh, verse 23, it says, All things are possible to him that believeth. So I don't know what you need tonight. I don't know, you know, everybody's personal struggles, or, you know, you don't know mine, but the reality is, is God can do it. Is that God can help you, God can fix the problem, and God can work in ways that you can't even imagine. I love the verse in Ephesians that you know, he did abundantly above all that we could ask or think. You can't even fathom it, because God is so far above our knowledge and our understanding that when he does something, it's like, man, I, I can't believe it. Why? Because God's going to get all the glory for it. So realize that God wants to do impossible things in your life. Can God can seriously do the impossible. God wants to do the impossible. You know, strong, we're talking about being a strong Christian. The day and age that we live in, the world needs strong Christians. The world needs somebody who's going to step up and say, you know, I'm going to start praying impossible prayers. I'm going to start doing something that's, you know, that only God could do. So strong Christians pray impossible prayers. People who intensely believe God for the impossible are people that have seen God do it before. And those who have witnessed the impossible are those who have prayed for it. So realize that a lot of people are like, oh, I, you know, some people, you know, oh, I believe God for the impossible. I know He can do it. I know He'll do it again. I know uh, somebody that that I've worked with before is uh, they they just such a faith in God and they trust in God. And they're like, oh, well, He did it this time. And he's going to do it again. Well, somebody who's witnessed God do the impossible is 
always somebody who has prayed for the apostle. Amen. That's the order. You pray for God to do the impossible and don't give up. Don't stop praying. Keep praying until it happens. Amen. And then God does the impossible and then you can tell other people and encourage them. And never is like, oh, God just showed up and did the impossible. I never once prayed for it. Well, somebody would have been praying for it for them. But reality, realize that you have to pray first and then God will do it for you. Amen. So in conclusion, what do you need God to do that is impossible? Whether it's a health situation, we know there's a lot of that happening. A finance, maybe you just need God to give you some direction, or you need to just be a stronger Christian, a stronger believer, or whether you have an unsaved family member. I know if I were to say, raise your hand if you have one, I'm sure most of us do. And somebody right now that's on our heart that is unsaved that we need to pray for, you know, God can save that person. God can truly do that. But God wants to do the impossible for you, and you are going to need strong faith. And we talk about these three things, a strong relationship with God, a strong dependence on God, and a strong faith in God. So which one of those do you need you know, to ask God to help you with? Whether it's like, you know, I want my relationship with God to be stronger. I want to be somebody who's always talking about the Lord, is always you know, in tune with God. Or maybe you're saying, I depend on myself too much, and I need to start being a strong Christian who depends on God, or maybe you're saying I need stronger faith. I need to believe God for more. I need to trust God more. I need to have more peace and less fear, and I need to do that by being a stronger Christian who believes God. Christians that depend on God alone for strength, wisdom. You know, the world desperately needs strong Christians. The world needs Christians that have a strong relationship with God. The world needs Christians that depend on God, and the world needs Christians that have an unwavering faith in God. You know, that's what's going to help the world. That's what's going to help all these hurting people. I know lately I've really just been able to just witness and look at different people. And while I'm out and about, it's like, man, there are a lot of hurting people. And the, the, the reality is that the more people are hurting, the more they're open to the gospel. Some people, obviously, we know we live in New Jersey and it can be difficult to witness. But there are a lot of people who are hurting that want to hear about the gospel. So are you a strong Christian? That's a, the main point for tonight is being strong in the Lord. Because if there's anything we need now is to be strong in the Lord. So what area of your life do you need to be a stronger Christian? Strong ch Christians change the world. Strong Christians do the impossible. Why? Because we need to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this message, God. I thank you for how much it's helped me, God, and how much more I need to improve on, the, on this part of my life, God, to be a stronger Christian, to have a stronger relationship, to have stronger faith, God, to, to believe you, to do more things, and to depend on you, God, even more each and every day, God. I pray you'd help us all to be strong Christians and strong leaders, God, and just someone who depends on you, God, and not on ourselves. And I pray that you'd help me personally with this. And I pray if there's anyone here, God, who who you really spoke to tonight that says, hey, I need to be a stronger Christian or have a stronger faith or a stronger dependence or a stronger relationship or maybe something that I didn't even think I mentioned, but you spoke to somebody about. God, I pray that they get that settled tonight and that they would come and pray and talk to you. God, I pray that you'd help us with our communication and, and desiring to know you and desiring to be closer to you. God, I pray you bless in this invitation. I pray you just uh, help all those, again, that, that may be dealing with sickness. God, I know that you know, times are, you know, fluctuating with, uh, you know, different things and, you know, many people watching live stream. I pray you bless them as well. And God, just a lot of going on that sometimes we seem to falter or start to doubt you. And God, I pray you strengthen us tonight. God, I pray you help us all to realize and strive and do our best, all that we can do to be stronger Christians. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <laughs> Let's stand and let's sing the invitation 515 near in the cross. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There.
we may not feel able, adequate to serve or to do anything for you, Lord. We know in your power we can accomplish great things. And Lord, as we head into this new year, Lord, and Lord, so many opportunities that lie ahead, we would just pray that you would do impossible things in our lives. That we that you would do things, Lord, that only that we would know that only you could have done. Amen that all glory would go to Jesus Christ. Amen. And that, Lord, through that, that we would be a testimony, Lord, to others around us, that they would see the power of the Holy Spirit just working through us, and, Lord, that we would see many souls come to you. Lord, use us in a powerful way this year. Lord, do a great and mighty work, Lord, in our church, in our families, in, our, in each of our lives. Lord, we pray for your blessing as we're dismissed. Give us safety as we travel home this evening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.